My name is Chris Totten, and uh, today what I want to show you uh, to get you into some some uh, you know prototyping level design stuff is uh, how to do a level a simple level prototype in the Twine Choose Your Own Adventure engine. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Twine, uh, here wait where am I? Here it is. Uh, this is the Twine website at uh, w or at twinery.org and twine is a choose your own adventure engine based in html and javascript uh, it's for creating very simple games uh, analogous to the old choose your own adventure style books where you know you'd have something that says um, you know you are in front of a house do you go inside the house or do you go check out the garden, turn to, uh, you know, page 37 to go inside the house and turn to page 43 to look inside, uh, look in the garden. And then you, you know, go to that page in the book and it would lead you on a kind of like branching pathway through the story. So that's what Twine is really, you know, good at making on a very surface level. But uh, what's also, also really great about Twine is that you can use other aspects of it, um, you know, with some simple scripting like variables, um, and you know, you can add images and and uh, sound, and you can really make it into a, a nice uh, multimedia type experience. And from that, there have been some really awesome games made with it, uh, you know. And if you're unfamiliar with Twine games, I might recommend. Uh, this book is a dungeon, or uh, or uh, the uncle who works at Nintendo. But what I really love about those games is that they also have a strong spatial component. You know, for example, this book is a dungeon uh, comes actually with a little map graphic. Uh, you know, they they played around with the CSS of the web pages that Twine creates, and you know, added a little map graphic so that you can always track where you are in this dungeon that you're exploring throughout the game. Uh, you know, the uncle who works at Nintendo takes place completely in a house, uh, and the hub of the experience is you sitting in the living room playing Nintendo 64 with your friend, uh, but then you go off and explore other parts of the house or think about the creepy things you've seen to solve the mystery that's happening around you. So um, Twine is a really good, if you can you know, think about abstracting the elements of playing a video game level. It's a really great tool for creating early level prototypes. And the reason we want to create those prototypes is so that we can, um, you know, make our levels really quickly without actually having to go and like fight with Unity or something like that. Um, so, you know, any tool that we can use to get our game ideas down and in front of a player as fast as possible, tabletop, twine, whatever, um, you know, let's use them and let's see what the full array of our, our tools are so that we can, uh, we can make some great stuff. So uh, this, level, uh, this video is going to do a quick demo of a, of a twine that I just put together um, that'll hopefully give you some insight of how you can use twine uh, in this application. So what we're going to do is, again, I'm at uh, twinery, uh, T-W-I-N-E-R-Y dot O-R-G, <clears throat> and I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to use the web-based version of Twine. You can also download it for Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. Um, and I'm going to use the level, or uh, level, I keep saying level because it's a level design video. Uh, version 2.3.11, uh, which is the latest version of Twine, but you can also use the really popular 1.4.2, um, but we're going to use the latest one, and we're going to click this link here that says use it online, and you'll see we don't have any stories. Um, now, if I want to make a new story, and I'm going to do that, um, I can click story, and I'm going to call this uh, twine level design demo 2 and I'm calling it 2 because this is the like demonstration version and uh, so 
creating a new a new twine project opens up a, a window like this. Um, so you can see here there's a home button down here and what that will do is uh, that actually takes me back to where I was uh, so I can go into my project. Uh, you see the title of the project and what that does is it brings up a little menu so I can change the stories like raw JavaScript or the CSS. I can also change the story format and what that means is that um, Twine comes with a bunch of different almost like cores, uh, it really formats. And what they do is it's the it's the coding syntax you're going to use. And some of them have are more powerful than others. So one really powerful one, for example, that didn't load for some reason, oh, I have one version of it, it's called Sugarcube. Um, and that lets you add a lot of different uh, interactive elements and things like that. I'm going to stick with the default Harlow 3.2.1 uh, simply, you know, because that's what a lot of the, the Twine documentation is in. But, you know, if you happen to know another one or want to expand your knowledge to learn another one, I say go for it. That sounds awesome. Uh, but again, we're going to stick with Harlow for today. Um, trying to think if there's anything else here. No, there's just like organizational stuff like snap, snap to grid and things like that. Um, and then down here, you know, you can change how you view. Uh, we're going to stick with, oh, see, I lost myself. Oh, no. There we go. Um, I'm going to stick with the default size. You can test, and what that does is it opens a web browser with this little uh, debug window down here. Um, and then play, likewise, lets you play your Twine, again, for testing just without the debug window. Uh, and then you can add a new passage. And what passages are is they are these cards. But I'm going to show you a new, a different way to add passages here in a second. Um, the other thing I can do, and I'm going to do it right now, is if I go back to the home screen on Twine, I can import Twines from files. And why that's really important, so I can browse my computer. Welcome to my computer, everybody. Uh, here's all my stuff. Uh, and I'm going to go to my GDC Masterclass and Demo Files Twine, and I'm going to open Twine Level Design Demo. So that's why it's that's why the new one is two. Um, so, boop, and I've opened it. In fact, um, yeah. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start my new one. And what I'm going to do is, uh, the reason I have the other one loaded, and I'll show you in a second, but this one is, this one is done. And I'm not going to go through all of this. I'm going to use this as a, I'm going to go so far and then use this as a demonstration because I've got quite a complicated section here. Um, you know, I'm going to do some basics and then I'm going to open this up and give you a guided tour uh, just to save on time. I don't want this, this video to get out of hand. So uh, we're going to start real quick. And I'm going to go into my new one, which is Twine Level Design Demo 2. And I'm going to start, I'm going to double click the first passage and it's called Untitled Passage. Now when you use Harlow you get all these these uh, you know shortcut buttons which are really nice. It's like a rich text editor and uh, you know it's not important for everything but it gives you an easy to use interface for some of the things we're going to do in in our uh, scripting macros here. So I'm going to call this one Start and I should mention that like syntax is very important. So whenever you refer to this, um, you want to make sure I'm going to use a capitalized S. But uh, I'm going to edit my text. So I'm going to be really hokey here. And I'm going to say, you are standing in an open field west of a. Uh, and then I'm going to add two square brackets and type white house square brackets comma with a boarded front door um, this sound this might sound familiar to some people uh, and then I'm gonna say there is a small mailbox and also mailbox is gonna be in square brackets uh, here so what did I do so I have um, 
white house and mailbox in square brackets. Now, what does that do? So if I click out of here, boop, ah, now we see some really cool stuff. Now we're going to see we have this is renamed start, and you can see a little preview of the text in it. Uh, by the way, whenever I hover over a passage, you'll see a uh, delete button, edit button, play button, and then um, there's little, there's, uh, you can also like on this mit dot menu, expandable menu, I can choose uh, start story here. So that's kind of convenient. Um, but so what you can see is that I, uh, it changed its name to start, I get a little preview, but the passage, the words that I put in the double sets of square brackets have become new passages. So this is actually how I prefer to make passages instead of using the plus passage button. Um, there's a, there are reasons that are more advanced to just go with that, but right now I'm not going to go over them. It's outside the scope of this demo. So I've made one for White House and I've made one for Mailbox. So let's go to our, let's work on our Mailbox first. And I might say something like, Opening the small mailbox reveals a double bracket leaflet. Oh, double bracket. Actually, you know what? Let's do something here. I'm going to just type leaflet and then I'm going to highlight the text and then I'm going to click link and then create a hyperlink with this text leaflet. Um, and then, oh my, um, and then I can say leaflet, okay, and then add. Okay, so what did that do? Well, that opened up just another interface for me getting the same result that I wanted, and what it did was it actually provided a, um, I'll show this in a second, but there's a way to create a passage, um, in such a way that the text says one thing, but the passage might be another. We don't want that right now, so I'm just going to stick to, I'm going to delete some of this extra text and have it just be the word leaflet in double brackets. But, and that's all I really want, so I'm going to exit out of that. Here I have leaflet, um, and I'm going to arrange this this way um, just for like how it's going to expand in the future. And for leaflet, I'll do that. I'm going to say the leaflet reads Welcome to the Level Design Twine Demo. Um, and then, you know, I might say like this shows you how to use twine to create level prototypes. Um, hooray. Uh, so then I'm going to say, like, you fold up the leaflet and return to. So here's where we can do something kind of interesting um, that I that happened before when we did the, the um, rich text editor version of this, but if I type uh, to west of house, which, you know, you start west of the house, but we don't want, there's no passage called west of house, but essentially what we want to do is go back to the start. So um, it would sound weird to say return to start. So we're going to say return to west of house or the west of the house. Um, and then what I'm going to do is uh, type a minus sign and a greater sign to create a little arrow and then I'm gonna type start and you see that I actually get a little tool tip here uh, to complete it so I'm gonna click enter there and what that does is it finishes it for me so what if you have um, if you want to go to a existing passage uh, or you want to go to a passage but the name that you want to give the passage is really awkward you know sometimes when I'm working on more complex twines 
the names of the passages, I use like really utilitarian ones, but they, that you would never say out loud. Um, this is a useful tool because what it does is it shows the user the first part of it. And then what's after the arrow is actually the passage it'll go to. So again, that's really useful if you want the name to be more uh, utilitarian or if you want to uh, return to an already made passage. But again, saying it in your text would be kind of awkward. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, so there we go. Now we have like a little loop and we can, you know, start and go to a mailbox and uh, look through the leaflet, but then return to where we came from. So what happens if we want to go to the west of the house? So I'm going to open this up and we're going to do something here. We're actually going to go back to start and I'm going to create a variable. What the variable is going to do is it's going to allow us to create a puzzle. Um, so we're going to do in parentheses set and we're going to say dollar sign. Uh, so set um, colon space dollar sign crowbar to zero. And what that's going to say is like I don't have a crowbar. Uh, and I said that right, right? Okay, cool. Um, and what we can do here with this is if I get out of here and I go to, if I, um, basically what I want to do is, like we said, the house has boards over the doors. And so we want to get into that somehow. So how are we going to get into that? Now, um, if, if, you're an old person like me. I'm really not that old, but you know, if you are um, well versed in in game development like me um, or game history like I am, then you uh, might re recognize some of the text that I'm using as text from a game called Zork. Now, you know, we could make it so that you just go around the house into the window like you do in the original Zork, but I want to do some. Uh, I want to, you know, do a little puzzle here. So I'm uh, around this crowbar. So what I'm going to do is create an if statement. So it's going to be if colon uh, in parentheses if colon uh, dollar sign crowbar is zero, and then we're going to close parentheses, and we're going to create an open square bracket. Go two spaces down, close the square bracket because, because it's, it's always good, good to close your brackets. brackets. Um, right after you make them so that, you know, your code is nice. Then I'm going to type in a passage. So sick, um, there are boards over the doors. You can probably, um, if you can find something to pry them off. Um, you see some woods to the double brackets, east, and a truck parked to the, oop, to the south. Okay, and then, um, and then I'm going to do just real quick, like, you also go back to house. I like to make sure that you can go back when necessary. Start. Okay. Um, so that's that's our if. Now what happens if we do have a crowbar? Well we need to then make what's called an else that tells us like what happens if another condition is met or any other condition is met. So we're gonna go else and we're going to say Uh, and then we're going to close our brackets. Oh, not a curly brace. Uh, we're going to say, you think you can use the crowbar to double brackets. Now here, what I'm going to do, um, I don't want to, I'm going to call the passage, the next passage inside of house. But it sounds weird to say, use your crowbar to inside of house. So I'm going to say, remove the boards and then minus 
greater than uh, inside of house and then close double brackets and then period. So now if I look at this what I've done is I've created the passages inside of house south and east. So um, boop and this will make it a little easier. So the next thing I want to do, and I'm going to copy paste um, to make this go quicker. Uh, so you're not hearing me just do the awkward like typing talking. But because uh, I don't want this to go on for too, too long uh, also. But I'm going to copy and paste some stuff. And we're going to walk through it. So I'm going to say, you walk up to the old truck. It has cement blocks wedged in front of the tires. You see what looks like a toy ray gun through the window in the front seat. So OK, we want the ray gun. Now, um, here I've done something that you know is a little different. Uh, so if I am to play this, so I'm going to hover over this and get my play icon and take a look. But now I've added this picture that I found on Wikimedia Commons because you know making sure that things are Creative Commons or or uh, accessible or public domain is good. Um, but I've created a an illustration. Now what does that look like? Well, the the uh, format for that is to go less than sign. So kind of like a tag, um, you know, when you're editing a website but less than sign IMG space SRC for image source equals and then in quotes you're going to put in the URL of an image. Now you can also um, in newer versions of Twine embed images like by browsing for a file but I like to use existing images and you know this can this doesn't really necessarily serve a purpose. I've seen Twine games made out of images, and you have to like search the image for the clickable thing. But um, for the purpose of this, it's just an illustration. But you know, it can make your your stories look kind of nice. And then after uh, the URL, you type you have width, and then it gives the width um, that you want it to appear in the browser window, and then it scales it accordingly. That way, you know, if you load a, a huge file, it doesn't just load a huge uh, image and then it takes up your whole web page. So uh, that can be nice. And then I've created two different links, try to open the door or remove the cement blocks. So there we go, open the door, cement blocks. So we're gonna, uh, let's, oh wait, Try opening the door. Okay, so we're gonna put it like a dead end here, just to you know give the player things to do. So in terms of level design prototyping, what you're starting to think about is spatial relationships. And if you're thinking about a, this is where you get the very choose your own adventure feel. But we're basing our choose your own adventure um, design on on looking through space exploring space and you know for that it's good that you can put these situations where you go and like you know if we try solving the puzzle one way um you decide to look at the old truck again you know we can go back to south so you have these opportunities to go forward go backward and really explore so that can be very uh nice when you're when you're building out your twines to you know, be this explorable area. Um, and of course, the the one to one prototyping aspect of it is that, you know, you'd build your major spaces as twines and then, you know, run through a player almost to see like what type of choices they might make if confronted with different decisions. It's not perfect one to one uh, with like a 3D level, but it, it, you know, you can do quite a bit. Um, and you can give people the idea of like, puzzle solving and strategy to a degree. Um, so then what we're also going to do is put one for removing the cement blocks, which is going to make the truck um, like roll forward into a tree and then its, its rusted door is going to pop open and we'll be able to reach into the cab and get our ray gun. Now which means that we need to change, we need to add another variable. 
So I'm going to go back to the start and I'm going to set and then dollar sign ray gun to zero. Um, so that when we go into the cab, Uh, you look in the cab and pick up the toy ray gun. Light shines from the gun and travels up your arm, covering you in futuristic looking armor. Who leaves this st uh, stuff like this just lying around? Feeling pretty awesome, you head back to the, you know, and then uh, double bracket White House. Now, because we already have a passage called White House, you know, and we can see here, it automatically draws an arrow back. Now, when you do this, make sure, you know, so I have White House not capitalized because it's not the White House, it's White House. So, you know, as long as the syntax is correct and all the capitalization is the same way, then um, it's going to, it's going to just refer back to the previous passage. So again, you can make um, an explorable space by like figuring out these landmarks that you want and then making you know easy passages between places and you can start to try out different like you know when you're standing here you see this over that way this over that way this over that way uh, and that starts to turn into level design and again so if you do want to set up like a sequence of events you can do things like um, you know if we had gone to the White House before uh, well, you know, we can't get in without the crowbar, so it's always going to say, you know, you want to go to the crowbar. Um, but, you know, what have I done here? I've, I've set ray gun to one. So let's look at uh, what that means, why that matters. So if we go back to our south passage, uh, or our east passage, sorry. Um, getting a little turned around here. There we go. Um, so what we can do is, boop. So I can say the forge doesn't, uh, forest doesn't seem to have a path. So you trudge through the thick brush. You see a clearing ahead where three unfriendly looking space aliens are guarding what looks like a cargo box. So we can say if ray gun is zero, you think about running for the cargo box, but think better of it. You decide to turn, return to the White House to regroup. So you can put an if there that says like, all right, you're not gonna be able to do anything until you have the ray gun. Um, or, you know, you can't do anything right now and that'll be because you don't have a ray gun. So, you know, that's where you start to create a sequence of, of things that you need to actually go through. Um, and you start to turn it into, you know, a bit of a level with a sequence of things and puzzles to solve. Uh, the other thing we can do is create a combat encounter. Uh, so, like, first of all, you know, if we have, um, oh, hi, hi, girls. Hey, can I made doing a video? Can you? Get out that baby. Um. So, if we add this else to this. Then, so if I go to east and I add an else, I can say else and have a, oop, let me close these brackets. Boop. All right. Um, so I can add an else and it's like, you look down at the ray gun in your armored hand, it says that you have uh, ammo, ammo. So what this is, is this is actually calling a variable. So let me make this variable. So I'm going to say uh, set variable, so dollar side ammo to five, and then parentheses, and that sets ammo to five when we start the game. You have five ammo, so it'll say like how much ammo you have. You think you might be able to take them out uh, from this hiding spot before they see you, which do you shoot first? Um, and then this is where I'm going to wrap things up, but also try to show you, um, I'll show you the pre-made one, just kind of like a cooking show. Um, so 
if I go to the east here, this one, it's got a little more complex. So let me let me walk you through what's going on here. So we have the, you know, you go through the forest and you see what looks like a cargo box. Um, you know, and then we have, if you don't have the ray gun, you don't, you think about going back to the White House. And then you also have the else you look at the ray gun in your armored hand. So what I have now is I've created three more variables, one called grunt, one called elite, and one called sniper, because, I mean, I could call it jackal. Um, but these are basically like, you know, think about Halo, um, where you get to like behind a rock and then you go, you look over the rock and, okay, there's a jackal and there's an elite and there's a few grunts. And, you know, how am I going to take these guys out? It's sort of like a combat puzzle. Uh, so that's what I've built here is a sort of like simple combat puzzle. So, you know, if I have Grunt, Elite, and Sniper set to 1, I will show you what this does uh, by starting my twine. Uh, so I'm going to do the White House. Uh, I'm going to go south. There's my truck. Uh, if I try to open the door, I can't do it. If I remove the cement blocks, I open the cab, uh, I get the, the armor and the, the gun. Uh, so now I go to the east and see what my twine has yielded is because all of these are set to one, I have um, these passages here. Now, if I go and I take out, so I'm going to shoot, uh, shoot like let's shoot the guy on the hovering platform because I always like to take the snipers out first. So I'm gonna shoot them, boom, headshot. You hit the alien cleanly and it falls backward in the forest. The other two don't seem to notice. You take a deep breath toward uh, and towards the aliens, that's a typo, and look towards the aliens again. So see, I've taken that out and because sniper is now zero, because on the alien moving platform one, I've set sniper to zero. Now what happens is that when I go back, this passage here is gone. And, you know, I can do stuff like this. Now I'm not gonna go into each one of these, but there's, there's opportunities to win and lose and die and things like that. And I don't wanna spoil the ending but you can see where by setting up things like, you know, if your ammo is five, let's look at this passage with the, uh, the sniper. If ammo is five, boom, headshot. So that means if you take the sniper out, because again, I like to take the snipers out first, uh, that seems like a good, a good way to go about this. Um, so if you have full ammo, that means that's your first shot. So if you take the sniper out first, the uh, the guy goes down cleanly. He hasn't been alerted to you. You lose an ammo because you just shot, but sniper's out, and you know nothing bad has happened. Um, you know if your ammo is something else, you fire. You know so theoretically you've shot something else, and like maybe the sniper knows you're there. You fire off some shots, but the alien on the platform ducks and dodges before you can get a clean hit. You've lost three shots. So there's a penalty there. Uh, so you can do stuff like that and create, a, like I said, a combat puzzle where, you know, if your ammo is five, meaning that that's the first shot, one thing happens, else something else happens. And then, you know, through programming it, I found another scenario where, like, if the ammo is two, then, you know, what would happen is you wouldn't have enough shots left and bang, you're dead. Um, but I'm not going to walk through that. It just happened through the game design. Um, you know, and then I have scenarios for, you know, if ammo is basically what I've done is mapped out. Like if you go to this one first, you know, I, I've created passages for every sequence essentially, um, that you could do. And this, what happens is some end with you winning, some end with you losing. Um, but this is how you can use it to map out a combat scenario. So already in a twine like this, we have different kinds of understandings of like how levels work. Basically, you have uh, this first section with the start and the mailbox and the leaflet where you go and you um, explore a space. It's very clearly geographically designed. 
uh, described. And then you have like a gating mechanism, like the crowbar. So, you know, you can have it so that, and the ray gun. So you have with White House an either or. If you have a crowbar item, you can get inside the house. If you don't have the crowbar item, you can't. And that's like a gating mechanism. So it's a lock and key puzzle. You know, same thing we have another lock and key puzzle in East. If you have the ray gun, you can get into the fight. If you don't have the ray gun, it directs you backwards to go explore your other options and the other pathways. So you explore this space until you get the right sequences of lock and keys um, to be able to, to uh, you know, go through the puzzle. Um, so that's it. That's what I wanted to show you. There's some basics of, of Twine. What I'm also going to do is in the description to this video, um, I'm going to put I'm going to post this Twine, this completed Twine on itch.io and I will provide a link in the description of the video to that, that um, Twine so that you can explore, you can download the file uh, and open it up in Twine uh, like I showed you with you know loading from file HTML and you'll be able to explore it to get a sense of, of uh, you know how this thing works and uh, you know have, have the syntax for doing similar stuff yourself. Um, well, I hope that was informative uh, if you do need more information, again, go to twinery.org and, you know, check out the documentation. That's why I did this in Harlow so that you can easily access that um, and it's right in front of you. But, uh, you know, happy, happy level design prototyping. I hope you